Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up as I give a recap and review as I go along of 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, season four, episode 10, entitled Cuts Both Ways. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. So David, he is still going out to address this person that he's been speaking to online. He is so consistent in finding out who this is. Now his friend is saying, are you sure that you want to do this? But David just wants answers. He finally goes up to the door and when he knocks on it, a man opens the door and looks kind of confused. And David questions the man and saying, hi, does anybody here live here by this name? My girlfriend of seven years has lived here. And the gentleman tells him, hey, I don't speak any English. And David uses a translator app. And the guy says in Russian, I've been living here since 1995. There's no one in this neighborhood by that name. I've never seen anyone by that name. No one, I've never seen anyone that looks like that in this building. None of that looks familiar. And finally, David gets a little reality checked. He thanks the older man, and he's clearly upset. And he says that he feels embarrassed that he doesn't even have the correct address. She never even shared that information with me. Off camera, the producers talk to the older gentleman, and he says, you know, Americans shouldn't let the women of Ukraine kind of lead them on. It's kind of normal for that to go on, where they'll talk to people online and kind of lead them astray. And it's just really important that American men just ignore this. And David says that he's finally done. Ed, he wants to take Rose on a little getaway where they can spend some quality time. And they go on this, this little mini vacation. Ed is still a little suspicious about the sister, but he doesn't want to bring it up at this moment. It's her first plane ride, and they're trying to have fun. They're going to go to Balawan for a more exotic experience. There's white beaches there. And he wants to propose to her, but there's still some things that he wants to talk about. Um, he gets her a swimming suit. They're in the hotel. They're getting a little rested. And he pulls out some lingerie. And she gets a little blushed because, you know, anyone who's getting to know someone, if they get you a gift and some lingerie, you would feel kind of just a little embarrassed and just a little blushed about it. And he's making her feel super uncomfortable. And she says, I don't even know how to wear that. I don't even know what to do. So, was really an awkward moment. He says, hey, I got you this outfit. I got you this swimsuit and this lingerie, but I also got you mouthwash and toothpaste and a toothbrush. And it's evident that Rose is just very embarrassed. And you could tell from her facial expressions and her body language that she feels very uncomfortable. And she says to him that, my breath and you insinuating that I need to brush my teeth. And he's saying yes, because when I first saw you, you know, your breath wasn't that fresh. And he also tells the producers that when he met her, her breath was, was, was terrible. And of course, this is another situation where Ed always finds the worst time to share information with her. I personally think that he should have talked to her about this off camera, but he always has these awkward moments. And then we learn, she says that what you're smelling is not my, my teeth or my breath um, from not brushing my teeth. I always brush my teeth at home. It's actually from an ulcer. And Ed is just like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And I've insulted you now. And I had no idea that you had an ulcer. She can't take it. And she's so embarrassed that she walks away and goes into the restroom. And she's on the verge of tears. Ash and Avery, you know, Avery wants to know, of course, what do you do exactly during these seminars? Can I go with you to see exactly what you do? And, you know, he finally gives her the information that his ex-wife has agreed to see them um, in a few days. And Avery wants to know, during these seminars, is it mostly single women? Um, 
I mean, what exactly do you do? And Ash is saying that he hopes that she's not jealous and what he does is just to help people, but she just wants to go. She wants more clarification. So Darcy, we go back to her residence and she still feels sad, um, but she wants to move on. But Tom is on his way to Connecticut and he wrote her a letter and he feels he could better express his feelings, putting it in a letter and he wants to apologize. And you know, of course, he's just really behaving like a jerk. He wants things his way when he wants it. And after the way that he treated her and talked to her, he wants to pop up over her house and give her a letter, which was really interesting. And Darcy is saying to her sister, but you know, he wanted to speak with this lady friend. So I can't believe that he did me the way that he did me. Stephanie and Erica. Erica wants to meet up so they can talk. And Erica says, you know, I'm re really exhausted about the small arguments here and there. And what she's upset about, we've talked about over and over and over again before she got here. And you're not making it easy to communicate. And Stephanie says, you know, my online image is not exactly who I am in real life. And I do have insecurities and they agree to kind of start over and try to get on another foot. And, but they still don't have a good feeling. They're still kind of, the body language just shows that they're really not there yet. We have Godfrey and, and Vara, you know, it's time for him to go back um, home to the area where she lives. And she still can't get over the fact that he served jail for selling drugs. And she says goodbye to her mom, but the mother wants her to make good decisions. And the mother doesn't say anything to, to Godfrey, but it's very evident that she's not looking at him. She's not telling him goodbye. And she's very distant. And she's clearly um, affected by his news. And Godfrey can put two and two together and saying that She's not feeling me. She's not even telling me goodbye. Um, but my opinion is I think she's using this to her advantage because she has another American guy on the side because she did admit that that's what, what, what she was doing, you know? So we have Lisa and Usman, of course, and she's saying, I've already done so much. I've given a goat. I've worn these clothes. I've prayed. Why isn't this mother saying yes to the marriage? I, why isn't she giving us her blessing? And before they see the mom, uh, she's in deep prayer. They go up to her house and she's in deep prayer. And the mom is hesitant in telling the producers, I don't want my son going to America because I've heard that they just don't treat black people well in America. And the mother isn't having it. You could tell from her facial expressions, she's not having the, the fact that they're still coming to her and asking permission. And they're going back and forth and back and forth. And Usman is just telling his mom, mommy, please, you know, we really love each other. We won't stop. We're going to keep coming back. And the mother does say she was impressed that she at least tried to pray with her. And she thought that was some sort of initiative. But after looking at her son, seeing the sincerity in his eyes, as any mother would, she finally says yes. And Lisa can do nothing in the moment besides kiss the mother's hand due to religion. I, they can't really hug and, and kiss. There's, there's, there's parameters on expression. And Usman says that they weren't, they need to work on the jealousy. She's jealous and she's bossy and she has a lot of anger issues. So Yolanda speaks with one of the, her sons. I think it's her eldest son and her daughter. And she gives the updates to the son about what's been going on, the threatening emails. And she said that, interestingly, a woman reached out to her and says that she knows him. She knows Williams and that he misses you and his account was hacked. And the son is saying that how is it that she can contact Williams, but you can't? Something is clearly off. And the son does say to producers that my mom is just super naive when it's coming to this. And I don't think that she realizes it's a scam. And the mom still isn't believing that Williams is fake, this account is fake, and the person that's reached out to her is fake. Ash and Avery, they head to his seminar to give relationship advice. And we see the flip chart. <laughs> Finding Mr. Right, wow, that doesn't really look too professional. But you can see that the women are very interested and they're waiting on the class. It's not really full. It's like seven people, but he's always bragged that his classes are about 25 to 30 people and maybe even more to that. But we notice in this seminar that it's kind of picket. 
Um, and he seems ill prepared as he's talking. He's not giving any psychological terms to kind of back up his opinions. Um, he's really not trusting his own self. He doesn't know how to convey the correct terminologies and explanations. And you can see that the women that are attending the class are very doubtful. They're shaking their heads. They look very puzzled. So much so that as he's speaking, Avery thinks that a lot of the statements are very sexist, which they are. And he's giving these statements and saying, you're emotional, women do do this, men do that. And I will say as a female, some of the statements that he was saying weren't false. False. They were just communicated in such a way that it can come off and be perceived as sexist. Um, but he's doing so badly that he says to the class that he has to recollect his thoughts and have a moment. And the women in the class are saying amongst themselves, that's really weird. I've never had a teacher. I've never gone to a seminar where somebody is just so perplexed that they just walk out of the room and need a moment. When he does that, of course, Avery follows him to see, wow, you know, what's the issue? Is he okay? Usman meets up with his brother Muhammad um, to find a ring. And he doesn't want to get anything fancy because he says that Lisa has said over and over again, she doesn't want anything too fancy, nothing too sparkly. She just wants a plain ring. But he also says that, you know what, no matter what I pick out and how I think that it would accompany her, she will complain. She'll complain. Trust me. And Muhammad gives his brotherly advice and says, if you feel that she's going to complain, if you see that there's anger, I guess from a husband's point of view, try to meet her halfway and figure out, is there something that I'm doing that maybe is making her upset? Um, continue to be patient and just have peace. So even though his brother doesn't agree with the marriage, doesn't agree with the proposal, he is still stepping as, in as a big brother and knowing that he's an adult and he's clearly making his own decisions. So it is good to see that he did give some sort of advice. Um, and Usman is saying that the problem is that she's very just pushy and, and, and bossy. And he says that this is just something that we have to get together before we get married. We go to Rose and Ed and Ed, of course, again, with a split in his mouth, feels very bad for telling her that she has bad breath and wants to take her out so she can forgive him and they can talk. And Ed is already terrified and scared they go to see these monkeys to go to feed them food and look around but as before they can get to a park a monkey takes his banana which is typical because it's a banana of course um and ed wants to leave now because now he's terrified of the monkeys and rose is saying you know he's scared of the monkeys but i think that they're cute he just he's always scared about something so they move on and ed plans a very romantic night um, at the pool, viewing the beach with dinner and champagne. And he wants to talk about how he wants to form a relationship, but he's not 100% sure this type of relationship with her. He's still bothered that his sister, her sister asked him for money and he wanted to wait until after dinner to discuss this. But she says, no, you've already mentioned that you want to talk about something. What do you want to talk about? And he finally spills the beans and says, did you know about your sister asking me, me for money? Tom and Dorsey's situation. So the shocker is that he goes to see Darcy and Stacy answers the door and she calls for her sister and Dor Darcy finally comes to the door. And Tom says that he wants to apologize by the way things acted, uh, the way he behaved and the way things acted out. And Darcy says, you know, I'm moving on. You know, why did you come here? It's obvious that you wanted to free your conscience. And he said, well, I wanted to give you this letter. But Darcy is like, you can have the letter and whatever you're trying to say, because you had plenty of time and ample opportunity to say how you felt. And then on top of that, 
you told me that you're with somebody else and she can love you the way that you want to be loved. So why are you here? He tries to hand her the letter and with some pride and a little bit of more spine, she slams the door in his face. And it's a triumphant moment because for once, Tom finally doesn't get what he wants. He always wants what he wants when he wants it, which is a problem because he's never compromised and met her halfway. Stephanie and Erica, they start over and Erica wants to take her to have some fun and going somewhere and learning how to throw a boomerang. So she tells the man who makes the, the boomerang, hey, we're here, we're having fun and we want to play with the boomerang. And he's telling them a little bit of history and how he's part of a certain ethnicity, um, the last um, to make these particular boomerangs. And he asked Stephanie, you know, how do you guys know each other? Are you guys friends? And she introduces her as a special friend. And Erica kind of takes offense to that, that she didn't say girlfriend. And she gives a little giggle. But Stephanie says to the producers that he's older. I don't know his religious beliefs. And I don't want to insult him by saying that that's my girlfriend. So Erica, they are still having fun they're trying to have some fun and get to know one another and to throw the boomerang and to have fun and they're finally kind of loosening up a little bit and smiling and making jokes and Erica says that this is the person that I met online having fun giggly and being loud we go back to Godfrey and Varya and she's still not over his past she's still not looking forward to a camping trip that they have to one another. And Godfrey says, this guy is someone that I met in Mexico. He's Russian and he fishes and he makes things. And I just think he's a really good friend. And when they get there, you know, they're saying, oh, my friend. And the Russian guy is calling him Captain America. And they're making jokes. And the friend says to Vara, like, what do you think? You seem like you're upset about his past from what he's told me. But he's a good friend person and I wouldn't let his past be the determinant of his future because he's a really good person and maybe you should consider that look at the man that he is today and the person that he is today he lives it he doesn't just talk it so maybe you should consider how you think about him Ash and Avery, she's telling Ash that the statements that you're making are very sexist, sexist and shocking and she doesn't like what she's hearing at all. And she's telling him that I don't think you realize that you're coming off to people very sexist. Um, when people are asking you questions in the audience, you are very defensive. Um, and I, she also says that I don't think he was properly prepared. He's really just kind of up there speaking and not really giving informative and factual information based on studies or anything. He's just charging people to get up there and tell his opinion. Um, but he tries to go back and restart um, after he collects his thought. And he's saying that women are emotional. Women's minds are very complex and men, men are very simplistic. Um, and I actually um, understand what he's trying to say or try to say, but it wasn't said properly. So he just goes on and on. And then he goes on to say that women date people who are opposite and women date like this and women date like that. And someone from the audience says, well, I've dated someone along the lines of what you're speaking of and it still didn't work so what are you saying and Avery is very disappointed in the seminar and how he's th how he's talking to women and how he's very pushy that instead of trying to get him to, to understand where he's coming from he's getting very very defensive um, and the class doesn't last that long and he ends it and the people who have participated in the seminar seem just as confused now <laughs> as they were before they entered the class Back to Lisa and Usman, they take a nice walk and they get some fruit along the way so they can sit down and talk. And Usman is telling her that there are some things that need to work out before they get married. The man is supposed to leave the house. And in my religion, the man rules the house. And you speak to me like I'm a child. Do this. Sit here. Go there. Do this. And Lisa says, well, I'm not a child. You can't. And I'm not a dog. You don't talk to me like that. But Usman says, that's the way that you talk to me. 
And I don't mean this as disrespectful, but in my religion, this is the way that the, the fluidity goes. And you have to have peace. And if there are two kings in the village, there's going to be war. And Lisa takes offense to that. And not only does she curse him out, but she walks away from the conversation and flips him the bird. And Usman says that she's very controlling and she doesn't understand anything he's trying to say. And this is something they need to work out before they get married. David, he's finally backing away from the situation. He gets that reality check, but he thought that they were going to get married. They were going to get the visa and be in America and they were going to have fun on an RV. And he just keeps this naive indication and energy and he's just like what signs did I miss because I missed something and if I missed it I just want to know what those signs were because I honestly thought everything was fine but what's bad is he says that once he gets back in that chat room and she responds it responds he can't leave her alone and he doesn't know why he's so attached to her Erica and Stephanie, they go to see the sharks and to swim with the sharks and it look like they're having fun. And it seems like the energy and the ice wall is being broke down. Um, and she's just not 100% sold on the, their relationship, Erica or Stephanie. And they really feel like they want to talk. And Erica is telling her that she's ready um, to come out and tell her parents. And she feels that in order to be feel 100% comfortable in their relationship, that they must come out to their parents because that is the one thing neither of them have done. She wants to invite Stephanie to meet her parents to come out with her. But Stephanie is saying, you know, everybody comes out differently and I'm not ready to come out to my parents. And I'm definitely uncomfortable with going in the way that you're going. And I'm just not ready yet. Ed and Rose, um, Rose responds and says, I didn't know my sister asked you for money. And you think I want you because of your money? I don't want your money. And Ed says, honestly, I don't know what you think or what you feel because, you know, Maria, did she not tell you about the money situation? And Rose says, I had nothing to do with that. That wasn't me. And I'm hurt that you're even implying that. And I don't think you know that I love you. And Ed wants to talk to Maria with Rose um, in the room. And Rose agrees with that and says that that's fine. And Ed says, you know, now I'm completely convinced that she's telling the truth and that she's honest. And Rose says, you know, I want a nice family with you. I love you. And I want to have two more babies. And Ed says, wow, you know, I'm afraid now because Rose doesn't know yet that I want a vasectomy. I'm scheduled for it and I don't want to have any more children. Tom, after being rejected, and after Darcy doesn't want to read the letter, of course, he throws his adult slash toddler tantrum because he doesn't get his way. And he feels now that his true love after Darcy, Darcy reacted, of course, was Shannon. Not me, Shannon, <laughs> but a woman named Shannon. And Stacy and Darcy in their room, they have a little talk. And she's like, so what are you feeling now that Tom's popped over here? And Darcy says, you know what? I'm done. I'm completely done. The way he behaved, him leaving the letter on my car. I don't, I don't even want the letter. I don't even want that energy. And we have Stacy that goes outside. She takes the letters, a letter off of Darcy's car. She rips it up and throws it in the trash. Ed and Rose, they go to the beach. And Ed wants to propose to Rose, but he has to tell her the situation and him not wanting kids. He calls calls his friend for advice and before he does does that Rose says you know I'm gonna go take a swim so she goes to take a swim and Ed calls his friend and he's giving him an update on everything and he's like look I really want to propose to her but I haven't told her about my vasectomy she's saying she wants to be with me she loves me and she wants to have two more kids but I want a vasectomy and I don't want to tell her that and the friend is saying whoa 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 you are being very selfish in this situation. You're scheduled for the vasectomy. You don't. You know you don't want to have kids. How dare you say you want to propose and marry this person, but you're not being honest about the not having kids thing. You have to tell her because this woman is sacrificing everything in her life. She's changing everything under in her life under the impression that you're okay with that. And if you don't tell her that, that's being selfish. So you have to tell her. And Ed makes sense of it all. And he says, you know what? You're right. I need to tell her. 
Yolanda, Yolanda, um, <laughs> her kids aren't having it. And they're like, look, they've had enough. Mom, where are the photos so we can do a reverse search on the photos? Because this will be the first start and knowing where the photos came from. And this will give us some sort of idea who this person is. They start the reverse image search. But of course, that leads into the next episode and we don't see the results of that. The last scene of the episode, Ash and Avery go to take a nice walk along the bar boardwalk so they can talk. And Avery wants to discuss everything that she heard in the seminar. She says, Ash, I have to be honest with you. During this seminar, when people had questions, when you were saying what you were saying, I really think that the statements that you were making and your beliefs are very sexist. And they played upon as if women didn't have the capacity to think a certain way, to live a certain way, to do certain things. And I just want to know, do you really feel that way? And Ash goes to say, I really don't think you knew what I was trying to say. Um, maybe I used the wrong wording. And Avery is getting very upset because she's like, you always have this bubbly answer, but you never give me a direct answer. Everything is not clear. And it's a very tense, heated, yet calm conversation. But Ash gets so frustrated that he says, I'm done, and he walks away, and he doesn't want to talk so talk anymore so much so that as he's leaving, he's leaving to leave Avery where she is to where the producers have to step in and ask him, hey, where are you going? Um, because he's prepared to leave Avery where she where she is, and of course, she's a com in a completely different country. Why would he leave her like that? Um, and that is the end of the episode. It's very evident that Ash has a lot of things that he's not telling Avery. Situations with the ex-wife and his relationship coach career. There are still a lot of things in the shadows about that. And like I've said in previous reviews that you get red flags with people. It is your decision if you choose to ignore them. And a lot of people have received red flags. And the thing is, will they look at them? Darcy had a lot of red flags about Tom and his behaviors and his lifestyles and he even told her that he's not a truly committed person he's looking for that it might be a possibility but that wasn't where he is or where he was in his life so Darcy took a risk in putting her emotions with emotions with Tom and she went forward knowing the truth the same thing with Ash and Avery Yolanda her being naive and what's really going on she's so I hate to use the word desperate but she's very desperate to be with someone so badly that she's not seeing the truth she's had several red flags and it's unfortunate that maybe she may get the biggest red flag of them all and I hope it's a reality check the same thing with David he received several red flags and him being naive and thinking nobody would take advantage of me correct nobody would take my money and nobody would say they're going to do this and do that and not show up correct so he's not seeing the reality that people do take advantage of other people and it's going to take him understanding that to have his reality check now, I do think the situation with Godfrey and Varya, I hope I'm saying her name correctly, but with Godfrey, he is receiving his red flags as well. If she has an issue with your past so strongly and she's not taking it very well, you already don't have a good chemistry um, with one another. It's not this newly new person that you're just giddy about. It's just not there. Once again, I think he as well is so desperate for love and not wanting to be alone. He doesn't want to give up on this person, but he's receiving all of the red flags. Same thing for Varya. If she really honestly has an issue with this, and she saw him as a true potential potential person to be in love with and to build a future with, then accepting his past as the past is what she'll have to do. If she can't do that, it's just going to have a domino effect on the rest of their relationship, and it really won't have true and good potential in the future. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. And check out other wonderful TV and movie reviews and recaps in the playlist. Until next time, bye.